Welcome to the Bronx Aerosol Arts Documentary Project. My name is Stephen Payne, librarian and archivist at the Bronx County Historical Society. Uh, Kurt, you want to go ahead? Yeah, and I, I'm Kurt Bourne. I've been writing about uh, urban culture in New York uh, 40 years. And it is May 19th, 2022, and we're very uh, thrilled and honored to be here with Dos, uh, who is currently the president of uh, the Morris Park crew uh, and a longtime member of MPC as well. Uh, and um, looking forward to hearing all of the stories that he has to share today. So, uh, Dose, why don't you start off by talking a bit about your family's history and background and uh, how they ended up in the Bronx, at least whatever you know about that. Well, um, how you doing? I'm Dose NPC. Okay, uh, my moms and pop come from the South Bronx, uh, Jackson and Fox. Jackson and Fox. That's yeah, where they sure. met, from up that way. And they had, my mom's had me when she was young. Yeah. So she was with my pops. She lived with my pops and um, with, her, with his family, you know, his grandparents or whatever. I was born in Harlem Hospital. From Harlem Hospital, we, my mother, I don't know, they always stood in the Bronx. Yeah. She lived in um, Watson or Walton or whatever, but I was a baby. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And we went to Puerto Rico. In Puerto Rico, I went to school there, you know, pre-K or whatever. Yeah. But I was, I was, I was out of control. You know what I'm saying? Wait, where in Puerto Rico was it? Bayamón. Oh, okay, Bayamón and Ponce. That's the two parts I was at. Okay, okay. That's where my family's from. That's where they're from. Okay, yeah. And we were there for a minute, and we came back to the Bronx. When we came back to the Bronx, uh, my brother was born. Okay. My, now my brother's born in the Bronx, and we were here in Undercliff yeah. for a minute, university up that way, and my father was, you know, running around, yeah. you know, back then, yeah. single parent, you know, he went away to the joint, did his thing or whatever. What years? Just around, approximately years, that was around. Oh, man. Uh... 61s? Yeah, around the 60s, 70s. Well, late, late, well, I was born 69, so 69. it's about this, you know what I mean? Yeah, early 70s. Yeah, early 70s, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I just always, it's always was me, my brother, and my mother. Yeah. Okay. You, you know don't have I mean? too many memories of your father, huh? Uh, we got here and there. I got certain personal memories, like, yeah, yeah, with yeah. him, you know, but not really, you know. Yeah. He will be here one day. And then he was gone the next. Yeah. It was always my uncle there. Okay. My uncle Chippy. You know what yeah. I'm saying? My father's brother. And my mother always had us. You know what I'm saying? It was always... And then from Undercliff, my grandparents came from pre R and moved to the Bronx. Oh, right okay. next door to us. The okay. other building. And like I, like I told you earlier, that's the first time I noticed graffiti. Yeah. I saw a 7-Up. Sounds you know, it was a up. silver seven up on that wall behind uh, university where where KRS One and Scott LaRock was killed at. Yeah. You know what I mean? Up that, I was from that area right okay. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I saw the seven up, but but I looked at it because of the soda. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. He did it the same way with the little ball and all that. I ain't paying mine no more. And then I was at the center, like I told you, and. Uh, daycare center whatever they take us to pools or whatever that's yeah. when I first met my first writer 3D the counselor for you right yeah he was the counselor and I saw him tagging on the paper and duel and I was like oh <laughs> let me see let me see what is this yeah. and I said what you write he said 3D and I said 3D and I said okay but I didn't pay mind to it when I he was there a couple of times when I started going back to like really get into it and cause he did my name and I tried to trace it and all this because I always drew yeah. since I was young. Yeah. I was always drawing from the comics and stuff. Yeah. And that was the only thing that would keep me peaceful. My mother would get me mad crayons and paper just to keep me quiet and stay in the room. That was her thing. Because yeah. I was always hyped yeah. and always in trouble. So she would like, let me keep them calm. You know what I mean? Yeah. She yeah. even one day, she... Uh, it's funny because... You know, remember the old school desk that opened up like this? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. There was one, I think, throwing out. Yeah. And you know, and my mother dragged it home. 
You know, it was still in good condition, and she dragged it, and it was in the room. I destroyed that shit. I tagged all over that shit. But I had it, and yeah. I used to always love it, you know? And my mother would always buy me drawing paper, and I was always drawing, doodling, comics, this, that. But I didn't really get into doing the comic characters. I was just the colors and the lettering. Yeah. The lettering was, 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 was what was catching That's me. That's what you drew, drew to, huh? Yeah, but I, I would draw characters, but the lettering drew me in. But I didn't get into the graph. Yeah. I didn't understand the graph because yeah. I wasn't in, around somebody that would teach me. Now, if I would have stood with 3D, I think I would have started then, that time, in the 70s. Yeah. Or, you know what I mean? I would have been young. Yeah. Like Trap was with Dez. You know what I mean? I would have yeah. been one of those. Yeah, yeah. But um, I didn't get into it. We went back to Puerto Rico. And we stood there about two years, like I told you, about two, two and a half years in Puerto Rico. So you're still uh, in elementary school? Yeah, preschool, elementary school, yeah. In Puerto Rico, like, they got it different like that. Oh, different. Okay, all right. So when I came, when we came back here, we came to Pelham Parkway. Yeah. My uncle was living on Holland and Lydic. Oh, on Holland so, and Lydic. Okay. So we moved in with him for a minute. Yeah. My, a couple of months later, my mother found the apartment in Bronx Park East, Union Port Road. Union Port Road, sure. So that's where I started noticing graph. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everything was NPC. Everything was TFP. Butchering them because they for projects, yeah. you know. And that's when I started noticing stuff. And writers. And then you had the TVV boys batching them, the bus boys, coming up from Fordham. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So yeah. I just happened to be in an area that had all these writers. Yeah. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it was bound to happen. Either you was going to be a drug dealer, go to prison for your life, or you was going to be a writer. Yeah. So, Coach, so you, you, you thought you must have been, like, between 5 and 12, seeing all this. Yes. Because Bush yes. and them started getting up. And, yes. In the set, in the early, yes. like mid-70s, 74, 75. Absolutely. They were doing a whole car. Absolutely. You know? So you was real young. I was young. I remember seeing Butch's car. But the rip, I remember, that's one of the names, like, because I always said it in one of my articles when they interviewed me for Liquid Tech. I mentioned Butch in there. You know what I'm saying? Butch was like, yo, that's what's up, bro. You gave me props. I said, why wouldn't I? Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I always liked it, your thing. You know yeah. what I mean? You did your thing. Yeah. yeah. It was just, you didn't do it as you couldn't read it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I love the wild style. Don't yeah. get me wrong. I love the wild style, but I love, too, that you can read it. You know what okay. I'm saying? Okay. And Butch would do his curves and his style, but you could read it. Yeah. But the car that caught my attention, it was in the 70s. I think it was the late 70s. You remember that big snowstorm that was in the Bronx? Hmm. Around in the 70s? I think it was seven, I think it was 77, 76, 77, something like that. Something like that, right? Yeah. Uh, go ahead, yeah. Okay. I, I was going to 105. PS 105 on Pelham Parkway yeah. is between it's between Holland and Kruger. It's still there. That was yeah. my public school that I, when I came back. My mother's taking us. I didn't want to go. I'm getting dragged, right? And now the snow's blowing. <laughs> you see these balls rolling around in the snow, you know? All of a sudden comes this Don D car. Mm. The Hand of Doom. The Hand of Doom, okay. Right? It was the Hand of Doom or the one eating the apple, but it was a Don D car coming. Yeah. And I just stood, I almost got hit by a car. My mother had to drag me. I just stood like this, hypnotized, when I saw this car. I didn't know what it was. I didn't, you know, I just saw, I couldn't even read what the name was. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I was young. But I just was amazed at the colors and the way the sun hit it and the snow. I was like, holy shit. Yeah. I remember that day I went to school. My mother took me to school and I stole the marker from the teacher, Al Marco. Yeah. Remember the little Marcos? Little Marcos. I took yeah. a green one. I think it was a green or some shit red. And I tagged through the thing. Now, my name was Flame. Flame was your original name. My original name was Flame 3 when I first started. And I tagged around with it. Left it alone. Nobody knew nothing. Yeah. I got a hold of a spray can. My first spray can. I got a hold from one of my, the, the, the son of one of my babysitters. Yeah. How old were you at that point? Do you remember? About nine. Okay, nine, yeah. I was around nine. Yeah, about nine. And I took a tag on my kitchen window. 
Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With the spray paint. Okay. So if my mother was here, she'd tell you the truth. <laughs> Did she I almost sh- kill you? <laughs> kill me. I got the shit be out of me. Okay, okay. Um, I had the spray can. I took it. He didn't know I took the can. Yeah. I took the can, and that was the first rust black can. Yeah. Now, I didn't know the difference from rust to Krylons yeah. to later on. You know what I mean? I just know I had a spray can. Yeah, yeah. And I'm shaking and shaking. And I stick my, I lived in the D section in 1980 Union Port Road in Bronx Park East. And we lived in the D section. And we had the fifth floor window. And right there is the kitchen window. I stick myself out the window. Now, back then, remember the old railings they used yeah. to have to protect yeah. kids? Yeah. Those shits used to bend. So yeah. I bend off and I take a flame tag coming on the side like this. What was that for? My mother comes from work or whatever and saw that shit out that window. I had the shit be out of me. I had to be scrubbing out the window. I was scrubbing it. I couldn't get it off much, but you know, it just made a mess of black, but it was there. <laughs> that was the first spray can tag I did. That's crazy. And then I got hooked up with a kid called, uh, his name was Armando, but he wrote Flink. F-L-I-N-K. So we became little partners yeah. around the neighborhood. Then you had another kid I met, I grew up with, he passed away, Riz, R-I-Z he started with, but later on became Blame MPC. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So... No, he became a member of the Mars Park crew. Yeah. And Blame was more into the graph. Mm. And he knew Cap and he knew all these people. Yeah. Before I knew them. Yeah. I seen them, but I didn't know who they were. Yeah. At that time. You know what I mean? Until... When I got around Dwayne, like I told you, Flash, that's when I started knowing, oh, that's Rock 161. Oh, that's Zuko NPC. Oh, that's Cap. That's AD. That's how I started knowing the names. And then when I got inside the pinball room, like I told you, with Rock, that's when I knew what was NPC. Yeah. And I seen it, but it, it, it didn't attract me much. What attracted me more was the TVB. You know what I mean? The, yeah. You know, the TVB, because I was around Flash a lot. Yeah. And Flash would take me with him. You know what I'm saying? So I used to always be around those guys. TVB, TV, what's that? TVB called? stands for the Bronx Boys. The Bronx oh, Breakers, okay. the Bronx. Bus Boys. Okay. The Fres was Batch. Okay. They were from Fordham. They came out from Fordham. Poe right. Park. Yeah. Okay. And, um, how you call it? So, basically, it went from there. I went to the first show. That's the one I told you that Knock 167 did uh, the singer's face or whatever. Yeah. But I remember it was me, Blame, I mean, me, Riz, and Flink. We go to that show. That, that was the first graffiti show they had with canvases. Oh, okay. That's when Days, Crash, they just went into the the galleries. That's yeah. when they started going into the galleries. Was yeah. that in the Bronx? Or that was... No, it was in Manhattan. Oh, okay. okay. That was in Manhattan. We took the train and everything. We went to Henry's place and we got chased out of there. Henry <laughs> Chalfon, yeah. Yeah, we got chased got out chased from the out guys that were in the front. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They tried... Y'all were pretty young, I guess. Yeah, we were all right. young. Yeah. Like 12, you know? 13. Yeah, yeah, we were young. So, you know, we went, we saw it and I was amazed with it. You know what I'm saying? Because everything was with paintbrush, Spray paint. Yeah. So, you know, I started talking to the lady. Yeah. And she was like, oh, no, we already got everybody. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That's yeah. when everybody was running with the other guy, Waldorf or whatever. Mm. With Bass, Bass, uh, Bass and that Gene yeah. that was with them. So, I came back. I was like, all right, still tag. My mother wanted to move out of Bronx Park East. Okay. Where did she want to move to? She found an apartment on Pelham Parkway. Right on Wallace and Lighting. Uh-huh. So everybody was telling me, yo, you're going to have problems. You're yeah. going to a white neighborhood. Yeah. And I'm like, what's the difference? Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you, I mean, I didn't yeah, see, yeah. I didn't yeah. see black, white, yeah. like that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Because remember, I came from the South Bronx. Yeah. On the Cliff Avenue. You yeah, can't well, get no more South Bronx than that. Yeah. yeah. What, what was Undercliff like? Do you, uh, oh, my God. Like Undercliff, I grew up with all blacks. Yeah. It yeah. was all blacks. Yeah. But it was in... It wasn't the way it was in Pelham Parkway. Yeah. Pelham Parkway was the worst of the worst for me. Yeah. In my younger years. Yeah. You know what I mean? My my third grade, fourth grade. Those were the the trifling years of my life there. Yeah. Getting picked on. You know, I used to get chased through the yeah. neighborhood. 
I was, I mean, I'm not gonna shit you, bro. I yeah. was, over, you know, my mother would be like, "Yo, stay upstairs, come on, no one." Yeah. I'm like, I can't, I can't. Yeah, because we're, we're how many Sp- how many Spanish families were on on that block in Wallace? At that time, was I, I was like the fifth Spanish family. Yeah. Every in the block on Wallace itself was just a couple of Spanish family, and that was it. Yeah. Every other block was all white. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I had this this group of guys that used to hang out all night across the street from my window. Okay. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? couple of white dudes, you know, blasting heavy metal, and this was every night getting drunk, and I used to always be watching. Yeah. I don't know why it tracked me to it, and then the car, he had a purple car. Oh, okay. This shit was hot, a nice hot rod, and I just kept looking, but one of the guys, like, again, like I told you, was Spanish. Yeah. His name was Tito. He worked right in the dry cleaners in the corner, yeah. but he never acknowledged himself being Puerto Rican. Okay, yeah, yeah. He yeah. always, like, he was white, and yeah. this dude would chase me every day freaking day through the neighborhood trying to beat the shit out of me and all this until one day I caught them getting high yeah and they were doing whippets you remember whippets mm-hmm. they would take the CO2 canisters you know that you use for BB guns yeah and they would put it in balloons and inhale it that, <laughs> that was called whippets back then in the 80s or whatever that's when that rush and locker room shit came out if you remember that little thing that you shake with a ball and you, you smell it yeah. and it give you a head rush and then there was the glue the huffing glue days so I caught them, and I was like, oh, what are you? and they started talking like Donald Duck, because that would make you, uh, what is that, like that, that thing you put into the balloons? Uh, uh, helium. Uh, helium. Yeah, it's like helium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it changes your voice, and they were getting high on it. So I was like, what are you guys doing? And they were like, get out of here. Stop being nosy in the back of my building. And I'm like, yo, I caught these guys doing something with tubes. Yeah. And I remember going back with the guys, and I'm like, look, look, look what, what is this? But somebody else told us, so Tito kept chasing me around, and I kept always getting picked on, getting jumped, and majority of it was NPC. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Majority was NPC in the school. You had um, Peter Say, I mean, you had Jay Rivera, and these are Puerto Ricans, yeah. again, Yeah. and they acted like they were white. Yeah. And I didn't know. I didn't know they were Spanish. Yeah. So I started getting older, you know, and more into it and going to their houses. And then you found out, yeah. Yeah, I would sleep over and now I'm getting waking up by your grandmother and she's talking cursing me out in Spanish. I'm like, you Spanish? <laughs> so I start talking Spanish and she's like, you Spanish? And I'm like, and when you walk in through the door, I'm like, you lying motherfucker, you all this time? Damn. So, yeah, it was funny. Yeah. It was real funny, but I got picked on a lot and... So what, was, what were the gangs... Uh, in that area at that time because obviously it was in no gangs it was no gangs no they, no gangs at all by the only thing was MPC MPC okay. M- that was all from Morris Park 180th all the way through Allenton coming all the way up everything was MPC you know what I'm saying because all that was all white yeah. coming through uh, there okay. and then you had UA UA was Pelham Bay Mm-hmm. You know, and Westchester Square, which it was MPC also too, but you had the Thrive Neck Boys. So I was always I'm around the whole white neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. But there wasn't no gangs. The only gang that you had, you had the Cobras, mm-hmm. which was a motor a motorcycle group. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was on um, Boston Road. On Boston Road, yeah. The Satan Soldiers. Satan Soldiers. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? But then when I would come down to Lambert, you had the Black Spades. Yeah. yeah. The Chingalings. Yeah. But before the chicken, the Savage Skulls, Savage yeah. Nomads. Yeah. You know what I mean? And when I started going to Harlem. Yeah. Because I went to Harlem when I was 13. Yeah. You know, 12. That's when the dust was the thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So in 83, that's when everybody started going down that way. So I started going down with these guys. Yeah. And we would have a lot of fights because you, mm-hmm. I'm coming down with a bunch of white dudes. Yeah, and I used yeah. to say, I'm not white. What are you coming at me for? <laughs> but it just kept going and going. Yeah. And I just was like, all right, this is what it is. This yeah. is what it is. I couldn't cross. And Pelham Parkway, you got this side. You got Pelham Parkway yeah. North and Pelham Parkway South. Yeah. I couldn't cross to the other side. Oh, yeah. yeah. Because yeah, yeah. that was the project side. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So for, for me to go through that way, I would get chased. Up to the block to 135, the other school, yeah. and they will stop right there because now that was part of MPC, BMF, and they won't cross over. Yeah. So it was just that area that for us to cross through. Okay, okay. So yeah, it was yeah, always yeah. beef when I went to my high school, Columbus. Columbus, that's where you went to high school. Yeah, I went to, but I didn't last there long. I yeah. just went for a while. 
But basically, that was it. My mother raised us like that. And she was always on top of me. And I was always running. I had a lot of fights. In 82, I was called for by Cap. Okay. He sent Flint. He sent Flint and Bick to come get me in the back of my building. And I remember I was there with the mother of my kids. Yeah. My first kids when we were kids then. And she was like, don't go, don't go, don't go. Don't trust them. No, let them come to you. And he was like, yo, Cap, want to talk to you. And I said, oh, tell Cap, come here. Yeah. And he's like, no, come on, don't worry, nothing's going to happen to you. I'm like, why do you want me to go over there? You know what I'm saying? Why do you want me for? And everybody's like, don't go, don't go. So I was like, you know what? I told my girl, you know what, man? I already got my little respect. And she's like, yeah, but I said, no, I fought a lot in this neighborhood. Yeah. You know what I mean? So now I have my little respect. People didn't knew better not to mess with me. And then I had the part that, yo, don't mess with the Spanish. If yeah. you mess with the Spanish, you don't mess with me. Yeah. That's the way I had it because then the Albanians came out and yeah. they had the other block. Mm. And in my neighborhood, we didn't have black people living there. Yeah. We had them in the, pro- in the building on Janelle's Towers that was near Esplanade. Sure. But I grew up with them going to school and yeah. we, we were good friends. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But they couldn't come to Lydic and Wallace. Yeah. Until I bought two kids, twins. Two black kids, they were from Gun Hill Road. Gun Hill Road, yeah, yeah. And they went to school on Olderville. Yeah. And my brother happened to go to one of those schools. And he met them and brought them to the house one day. They couldn't leave the house. My brother's like, yo, you got all them white dudes out there? They were. I was like, what? Shit. So when I came out, I said, nah, ain't nobody touching them. Yeah. And they were like, yo, nobody's touching them. You know what I mean? And they kept coming through. They kept coming through, you know, hanging out. They did, they, I forgot their name, but they disappeared. I never saw them again, you know what I mean? Yeah. But that's when the people were like, my. I saw that my respect was up. Yeah. And that's when all the girls, I, I, I loved it. My name being up and the girls. But around 79, 80, I think it was 80 or something that I told you earlier. I got stepped by Sid, Sid One, which he was MPC TCT. Oh, uh, so Cap, what happened? Oh, with Cap? Oh, right, I'm sorry. Well, Cap calls me down, and I said, okay, let me go. I told my girl I'm going to go. She's like, no. I said, come with me. She's like, no, I'm not going over there. You know, I'm going to go tell your mother. Yeah. So my mother's like, you're not going over there. I said, I'm going. I'm not, I'm, I am not. I got to go. Yeah. You know what I mean? She's like, for what? I said, I don't know. I got to go. So I went. Now, NPC used to hang out on the bench on Bronx Park East. The whole park was theirs. Mm. Okay. That was all theirs. The handball courts, that's all NPC's turf. But that's where we used to sit. They used to sit and watch the trains go by. Yeah. So I go and I see everybody over there. Now, mind you, I went, I played uh, baseball with these guys, literally. Yeah. You know what I mean? I went to 105 with them, young, you know, even though they picked on me or whatever. But there was one cool dude at an NPC that I got cool with. Yeah. In school. And his name was Rook. Rook 2. Rest in peace. Now, I saw him and he acted different. So I was like, wow. You know, I thought I would get the greeting like he would always see me in class or whatever. Yeah. So I see everybody there. So I'm watching and I'm like, yo, what's going on here? So they say, come on, we're going down to the park. Mm. So I said, nah, I'm not going down to the park. And they said, come on. So Cap said, come on. So they get behind me, and I'm like, yo, what the fuck is going on here? So we start walking down to the park. Now it's about maybe 20, 30 other members down there. Yeah. I was like, holy shit. I didn't think this crew was that big. You know, I'm thinking just these guys. Yeah. And I see all these... All these white guys, Italian, Irish, whatever. And I'm like, okay. Then we sit at the bleachers. And Cap starts talking. And he starts telling me, yo, listen, um, you was recommended for the crew. And I always had my eye on you. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, what are you talking about? And he said, you know, to be part of the family. And I said, what I got to do? And he said, you did enough. Your time will come. You know, so I thought, well, I didn't know initiations. I didn't know nothing about that. 
So we were there. We start drinking. We start smoking weed. You know, that was the thing or whatever. And we party. And then he says, you got to come here every day. Yeah. I said, every day? I said, nah, I hang out at the block. He said, nah, you don't belong there no more. You with us now. You part of this family. So I got to take you around. So I'm like, what are you talking about? So I go back home. My mother's asking me questions. And I'm like, wait a minute. What the hell am I getting into? Yeah. So Flint lived in the other building down the block. Yeah. So I went towards Flint and I told him, come down. And he comes down and I asked him, I'm young. I said, yo, why they want me? Well, what is it with me? I was a skinny kid then. You know what I mean? I didn't have no weight. I was young. And he was like, he saw something in you, bro. I don't know. I'm like, okay, but what? What do you want from me? You know what I mean? I had to fight my way through here. Yeah. What do you want with me? And that's when he said, yo, Capsine, you got heart. But there's a problem. Caban didn't want me in MPC. Uh, at all. At all. And look at this. Caban was Spanish. He was Spanish too, right? He was Spanish. I didn't find out Caban being Spanish till the late 80s. Wow. I, like the story I said, I slept in his house. Yeah. He leaves the house. I think to get weed and amber or something leaves me there and I get woken up by a Spanish old lady cursing me out. And I'm like this. And she's like, who are you? Ah. And then I had to tell her my real name. I said, oh, it's Ronald. Yeah. It's Ronald. And she said, what? And I'm like, yeah, the one that calls the house for Anthony. And where's Anthony? And his father came. And I'm like, you guys are Spanish? <laughs> when he came through that door, oh my God, I rushed him. Yeah. I said, yo, I cursed them in every book. I told them, how you going to deny your race and all this? I went at it. Because even though everybody used to always tell me, even to this day, that I met a lot of writers now yeah. that met me, they were like, yo, you dose? I thought you was white. I said, where you get that? I'm white. Nah, you're not dose. I said, okay. I'm the only dose, brother. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I don't know. And then people say, yeah, that's those. Yeah. But everybody always thought I was white until they heard me start speaking Spanish in Tough City. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, where you get that I'm white? Yeah. I never deny my race. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm not with this white, black, yellow, whatever. I'm just me. Yeah. And people are like, why Why are you NPC? Why are you running? That's my family. Yeah. Why would I not be? I love that to, to the day I die. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Do you do you, do you remember how, like uh, around how old you were when when Cap called you? Uh... Well, you figure what? 69, 79, 10, 79, 80, 80, about twelve. Okay, about twelve. Yeah. And so you it, were you still writing uh, uh, Flame at, at that point or no? Okay, you'd already started writing. I was dose already. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to change Flame because uh, Sit One approached me. Sit One NPC approached me and told me I had to change that name. Because there was another Flame from Queens, mm -hmm. Partners in Crime. Okay. You know? But I didn't know that because I wasn't traveling looking at trains. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You were still young, too. Yeah, I was young. I yeah. was a young boy. Yeah, so, this last story, if it's the same cap, is this the same cap? It's the that only cap. That's the notorious cap. That's the only cap. That would go over. That's us. They would go over like these big time artists. That's us. And not not care. That's us. And then did anything happen to him because he did Absolutely it? not. But you gotta remember, you see, this is one thing I wanted to get out. And I'm glad we're doing this. Yeah, yeah. It's not just Cap alone. We play the part with Cap. Yeah. Okay? Cap couldn't not just do do what he did alone. Without y'all. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Got it. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Now, Cap stood his grounds. Don't get me wrong. Cap will fight whoever. Cap went wherever. Cap went to Harlem by himself. They used to call him Big Red. That's yeah. the name they gave him in Harlem. Big Red. We would roll up on the bench, yeah. and Cap would say, look at this, and stick his head out the window, NPC, and you see everybody start running. All that shit they did about, oh, let's get united. Let's do this. Let's... The only man in history that went up against Cap was TK170. And fashion moto. Yeah. And Cap went to TK. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? TK didn't come to Cap. Cap went to TK. They Tracy fought. took him. They fought. They, they fought. fought. They yeah, fought. Yeah, yeah. All right? And that's not a thing that Tracy, that, you know, people say TK won and Cap lost. Or, no. They both beat the lemon shit out of each other, bro. <laughs> they both beat the shit. And that was over Cope 2. Okay. That's what I mentioned Cope 2 because they, 
They talk about that story a lot. Yes, because that was because of Cope. Cope was MPC in 83. So Cope was a member of MPC? Yeah, for just that moment. Oh, just that moment? Okay. Just, a, just a second. Yeah. Uh, that was it. So all that shit that Cope be talking about, that he's MPC for 40 years and 50 years, no. No, no. You left MPC. You ran. You ran from MPC. Hey, and what, what did he join after MPC? Did he jo join up with another crew? Who? Cope. Cope always had his crew, KD. Okay, yeah, so he just he just stayed with them, yeah. He was KD and TNF. Yeah. That's with Lay in them. Nah, Cope, Cope left MPC. Rook didn't want Cope. Rook charged Cope. Mm. Cone, Cope's partner, was the one that came to us, to Cat, and was like, yo, I want you, I want you to do you to Cope. Yeah. You know what I mean? Cone used to work at the, at the store we used to get our beers at. Uh, right on the corner of Bronx Park East. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cone's family owned that store. So Cone was always with us. Yeah. And um, they bought Cope. And Rook, Cope happened to go over a Rook car on the four line. You know what I mean? So Rook had problems with that. So when they brought him to the bench, that's when we were like, nah, absolutely not. Yeah. No. Because this is not a thing that you can just get down because you're right. NPC is more an extended to a lot of different things. Yeah. You know what I mean? Even though I, I got passed on the torch through Cat, I still would not put people down yeah. without the whole family with it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's a family thing. Yeah. So, so why did Cat go over other artists? Why would he just see a, 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 a piece and just go over it? I and could never, ever figure that out. <laughs> no one tells why. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. You know, to him, he said they went over him. But they were throw ups. Right. You know what right. I mean? Yeah. Right, and right. there's rules to the game. Right. If you take a tag, a throw up goes over a tag. If you do a throw up, a piece goes over a throw up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But Cap said that if you're going to go over it, cover it all. Don't uh, leave half. Tell us to take a piece. Okay. When you leave half, it's like you leaving me a message. You're yeah. disrespecting me. Disrespecting me, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. But when Cap started going over people, he only went over a few. Yeah. He hated Blade. That shit with Blade and Comet was out of control. You know what I mean? They tried to get at him. But Blade, Blade was part of the white... Comet was white. Yeah. Blade is black. Yeah. But he hung out. He hanged right. a comic. Blade came from Corp City. Yeah. Oh. Blade is from Corp City. Okay. He came from Corp City, but he used to live in Gun Hill, up this way. Mm. And that's when he got with Van and them people. And the TC5 was formed. And then Comet came along. But those were white. They were white. They're all white. Yeah. Yeah. Blade was the only black out of that whole crew. Out of that whole crew, yeah. You know what I mean? And it was just weird, but Cap had a thing with him, boy, that it was out of control. Cap had it with Blade, had it with Swan 3. He had it with Min, and they were both white. <laughs> with Satch. Yeah. You know what I mean? And Satch was tall as Cap. And he was white. Yeah. And quick. So, you know, but we went at them. Yeah. Mm. You know what I'm saying? We went at them. Yeah. That's why, you know, Cap gets the the prop of, okay, you went over these names. Yeah. All right, we got to give you, you did it. You did it on your own. You always ran with your shotgun. You know, you did your thing. Yeah, but you got to remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all did. You know, we all did our thing. But you got to remember, your crew held you down. We the ones that. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm the one that ran around bashing and Going after things. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, cause, cause other, other, if he didn't have the crew, then he would not stay. He would have been gone. You're not gonna stand alone. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But I won't take credit away from him. He stood on his grounds on his own. Yeah. There was times Cap went on his own. You know what I mean? He didn't take the crew when he went at T Kid. Yeah. He went with Tracy. You know what I mean? Cause that was uh, back then they used to call T Kid Tracy's kid. You know, for the T-Kit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Tracy took him over there. He didn't come with the crew. When he went with, when, when Cap got with PJ, because it was him and PJ that started that shit. Mm. You know what I mean? Even Scene says it. They both went started going over everybody. 
Yeah. Now people didn't want to see him, he didn't want to get part of it, but he was boys with them. Yeah. He just didn't want to get his cars crushed. Yeah. So when we started putting up, trying to get our pieces up, you know, when we young and we learning little styles and doing blocks, we were getting crossed out right away. Yeah. So we were like, why, why waste time? Yeah. All right, you want to play? We're going to play. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now we're going to play. Yeah. Now you think there's only cap going over you? All right, you're going to see what we're going to do. And this shit kept going on to, from RTW, CIA, top, to the 87, COD, TFO. You know what I'm saying? That yeah. was Tykin though and Rhea. This shit kept going. NPC and Tax Crew, we went over everybody. Yeah. We were the most hated but the most respected because nobody came at us. Oh, at nobody, you will run into us and people will run. Because we were nothing to play with. You know what I mean? They they try to say we took graffiti to a different level as we were outlaws. We were the outlaws of NPC. Yeah. But we were like bikers without the bikes and without the the, the patches. Yeah. Oh, okay. You know I mean, I mean? I know, I mean cap style is so unique when you when he went over a piece. You know, it's, it's like Well, he know, invented that style. That I, cap I, that's a unique style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody got, got that, that style. style. Ain't yeah, nobody ever gonna invent that style. Oh yeah, wow. Cap invented his own lettering. That's why my DE. A lot of MPC members, we all have almost typical a way of a style. Like my DE, I invented that DE. Yeah. It's 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 like if you had a paper, I would show you. But the DE was the way I do the DE is it was invented this yeah. way. Oh, you know man. what I'm saying? And it will come off. It will oh, come off. Oh. We, we got a we got a, a marker for you. Oh, you got a I marker got for me? Yeah. Ah. I got this and I got a. Uh, nah, this is cool. I got a pilot. This is cool. This is cool. You see? Okay. Yeah. 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 So that's dose. That's DE. I used to do DEs. You got, you, you, oh, DE? Yeah, DE, yeah, 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 the yeah, DE yeah. for dose. Yeah, oh, DE exactly, for dose. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, shit. Now, I, it's hard for me to read it, though. If I, well, you, I know, but it's this way. You see? You yeah, see the D? D? D. The baby D. Yeah. And then the E. The e. And then the E. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, you gotta share pictures with us. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have pictures of my cars so, and stuff. So why, why, why don't you, um, why don't you, you tell the story about uh, how you got the name Dose? Well, after Flame and I got approached, I had to go figure out a name. So I was with a guy that wrote Cosmic Seven, and we were at his house. And I'm like, yo, I need a name. I need a name, man. And I didn't want to use Ron because there was already a Ron one. Oh, okay, okay. That was running with CIA in them. Yeah. And then I was going to do a Ron with two ends, which I did a few pieces like that yeah. with two ends. And I was like, nah, man, I want a name that catches that something. So we were going in paper, paper, and I wrote who, and Cosmic was like, oh, take that name, do that. And I'm like, no, I don't want who. Yeah, W. What the hell? Who? Yo, who? You know what I mean? I was like, I don't want that. And he's like, yeah. All of a sudden, Cosmic came out with dose on a paper. And I said, let me get that. I want that. And he said, no, I'm taking that. I was like, but you got Cosmic. He said, no, I'm taking that. Take who? Don't worry. Do who? I said, all right, I'm I'm out of here. You know, I left this house. And I'm going down the block and I run into Sack and Tack. And there was a little store right next to my house. It was a shoe repair thing, and they had these little spray cans that you would spray your shoes with. And they, they're, they're part of him. They're part of him. Yeah, yeah. Tag and Sack was NPC. Yeah. And I go in, and I grab a couple of those cans. Yeah. And I waited till the night, and I jump out of my window. My brother's like, where you going? What are you doing? He was young. I was young. I said, I'll be back. Shh. And I rode all over the block. I remember I rolled Dose. through Wallace, all through Pound Parkway to get the name Dose. And that's how I got the name Dose. And, and he wrote it in front of Cosmic. Cosmic's building. building. On the side of his building, I did a throw up. Huh? And he's like, all right, that's your name. Yeah. And then everybody came out that day and was like, yo, who's Dose? Who's Dose? Who's Dose? And I just started laughing. And my first girlfriend, her name was Sweet C when she came from Ashula. And Sweet not. Sweet C. We cut off the C. 
and just left sweets. Yeah. So I, she always would beat. You better put me up so you will always see those and sweets, those are sweets, you know. I used to take it to the tracks with me. Yeah. When we used to vamp dudes for cans and everything. Yeah. She used yeah, to yeah. tell them, oh, I'm sorry, and they pass another can. <laughs> right on Esplanade, no bullshit. Right on Esplanade, we're laughing. But... Is she, that, she, is she still around? Yeah, sweet's still around. Okay. That's the mother but of my two kids. she didn't write, you wrote, you wrote it for. She would tag. Oh, she would tag. tag. Okay. She, would, she had a nice tag. Okay, she could tag. Yeah, she could tag, but... Anything else I did for her. Everything else you did. Yeah, for her. Okay. I always, I would give her her props because she was in that era. Yeah, she was yeah. from the eighties and the graph days. Because we we had one, we got on deck uh, Rocky one eighty four, and we got Charmin sixty five. That's my girl. Charmin sixty five. That's my yeah, girl. Yeah. I did a wall for her. I did a birthday. I did a Charmin for her. Oh, nice. Checker went and got me, and I did the character for Checker. I did a, uh, a Cheech Wizard. Yeah, and then I did the top Charmin. For her. Yeah. The last time I was with her was um, Checker took me to Philadelphia. Okay. okay. To paint. Yeah, yeah. Philly. I went to go paint up there, and she was up there. They brought me back home. Yeah. I came back with her and Rocky. I know Rocky. Yeah. I know, you know Rocky. Yeah, 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 I know yeah. Ro Rocky lives right down the block from me. Yeah. She, she lives, lives in right. Janelle's Tower. She lives right. No, yeah. she don't. She lives in Janelle's Towers. Okay. Okay. Towers. Yeah. 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 Um. Okay. So let's. How, how did you? Okay, there's a couple of things we, we like to get out too. Okay, first is like uh, your, your strategy for rack and paint. Because you rack. Right? <laughs> you, know, you, you know, most of the guys that well, buy. It, it, and then we, we want to know like what were some of your favorite yards, train yards that your guys would hang out in. Okay. So let's, the let's rack, see. which yeah. one you want? The racking? Yeah, racking. Yeah. Yeah. The racking, we, we, I, I was a beast on the racking. Yeah. We would call the shopping cart racks. We will go in, well, it came from Eon, this writer called Eon. He took Dez, D-E-S, Dez MPC, which is the godfather of my son. He took them racking and they went into shopping cart racks. Yeah. I go to Dez's house with my partner then, Man One MPC, rest in peace. And I'm telling him, yo, where you get all this paint from? Yeah. And he was telling me, yo, you know, this guy, you go, and that's when Rickles and Pergamon was around. So I'm like, all right. I said, but there's no way where I got to go. He said, Connecticut, Jersey. I said, okay, cool. So I get a hold of Elf, NPC, rest in peace. And I said, yo, let's go. And he's like, what? So it was me, Elf, and Man One. The first time we went. And we load up, a, we load up two shopping carts. It's maybe about, no exaggeration, 300, 400 cans of spray paint. Wow. You know what I mean? That's we, a lot of spray paint. Yeah. Oh no, we were coming out. We were coming out. The trick was you look around. Well, that was later on too. I started figuring out the, the movement. But what it was, you take the shopping cart and you go towards the aisle. Now, one guy goes outside and hits the mat. The doors open up. Yeah. And you just push the car right out. Okay. Now, if you see the security, the other guy would tell you, yo, security, you just let go of the, the, the thing and just go. Yeah. Or you just tell them, oh, it was a prank from school. Yeah. We and just had a dude there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. how it was. And plus, I was with the white guys. Yeah. White guys got better advantage. Yeah. Oh, so white. Okay. You get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. It's like Satch said. Oh, wait, you Absolutely. Yeah. Like Satch said in a video. Yeah. Satch said in Star Wars. He could go and rack 20, 30 cans and he was white. Nobody will bust him. Yeah. So... When I had my curly hair blown down, I got a vest and I got I am ain't in the back. What's your your appearance? Yeah, yeah, He's yeah, white. Rock on, rock on, yeah. You know, dirty jeans yeah, 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 and yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. I would go in and and I walk out, but I didn't like I that's one thing I did not like. It was body racking. I did not like doing that. Oh, okay, okay. I didn't like going I, I always had a problem of of getting embarrassed if I get caught. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I knew my mother would beat the living shit out of me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I never really liked body racking two or three cans. So I said, you know what? I'm going to go for the hole. Yeah. So we started doing the shopping carts. So how, how did you... So say if you're in Connecticut. Mm-hmm. Cars. But, they would drive. Oh, drive. Okay, gotcha. Like Elf had the license. Oh, sorry, Elf had a license. Okay, okay. You know what I mean? Okay. Elf had his license. And he had his permit. Yeah. Put it that way. Permit, okay. He had his permit. His moms were lending him the car. You know, yeah, thinking yeah. that he's on the block. Right, right. Until he got busted one day up there. That was yeah, a wrap. Yeah, that yeah, car yeah. was done. Yeah, yeah. Shit. Um, but we, we, I was, I was one of the shop. A lot of writers would tell you that we were the beast on that. 
the yeah. shopping cart racks. But before before you got into that, would you do like small time racking around the Bronx? Oh, uh, I did a lot of the little small rackings through the blocks. Yeah. We had some stores that would sell paint. Yeah. You know what I mean? We went through the roofs. Yeah. When they were closed. Okay. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Sure. Pelham Parkway was in an area that you had stick up guys. Yeah. You know what I mean? Chain snatching. These guys were a lot of burglars that was around there. So when Slip and Cole, we idolized them when they did the Martin's paint. Oh, okay, okay. I don't know if you guys ever heard that story. They went through with a sledgehammer. Oh, shit. The Martin's paint that was on Gun Hill Row on the five train. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know the one I'm talking about? I'm not, I'm it was not, one in the corner where the McDonald's and the bowling alley is. Okay. There was a there was Martin a paint. right there, Martin, Martin Paints for years. Yeah. They went through the wall with a sledgehammer. Wow. Like an exterior wall, they just They went through the wall through with it, a right? sledgehammer. You know what wow. I'm saying? It's in the NPC book. He tells yeah. the story. He went through the wall with a sledgehammer. And they took all this freaking paint. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And the word got around. Yeah. We were young and we were like, wow. Yeah. You know, we idolized them. You know what I'm saying? These dudes had pain galore. You know? And when when I started racking, we were taking testers. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? We were taking testers then. Testers, you know, the little spray cans <coughs> that okay. you get for my uh for the airplane model paints. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We would get testers, we would get the Pentels, yeah. the El Marcos, uh, the Magnums. Yeah. The pilots, you know, and then the inks from the pilots we were racking, we were doing that. I would do a couple of, and for the row, when they had Woolworths and stuff like that, sure. I would go over there and get cans. You know what I'm saying? I would get through there, but I didn't, I, would, I was really taking more paint off the tracks. Okay. When we were running on guys. Oh, okay. okay and okay, then okay, they had these sandboxes. I don't know if you saw it on Esplanade. It's at the end of the tunnel. Oh, There's a sandbox. There's a box oh, that has sand when it snows. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking a about. A lot of writers back then used to hide their paints there. Like in the in the sand? Yes. Okay, okay. They used to leave their paint there, go check the tracks out, and go eat something or whatever they did and come back later and come grab their paint. That That's how it was back then. Yeah. You mm -hmm. could hide. You know what I'm saying? People wouldn't touch your shit. Yeah, yeah. One day, by coincidence, I happened to open the sandbox. And we just started messing around or whatever. And a bag, a part of a plastic bag was sticking up. And I pulled it. And when I pulled it, cans came up. Okay. The same way Slip. Slip tells a story that he found paint like that one time too. And I found like two, three cans. And I'm like, oh shit. I didn't say nothing. I remember I started going again with my girl, Swedes. I started going checking the sandbox. I didn't find no paint. Then I was on the tracks, I find paint stash. Okay. And then we ran into other writers. Yeah. You know, it was uh tug of tug of war. Who yeah. could hold who 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 had more heart or whatever. And you know, a lot of guys would give up their paint. Yeah. yeah. A lot of guys would give up their paint. You're some guys. You're some guys. Let me tell you something. I can tell you names of guys and crews and you'll be like, huh? Yeah. That gave up paint. Yeah, yeah. Like nothing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> With their heads down and walking off Esplanade. <laughs> walking off Esplanade. We had Esplanade locked. Yeah. So, okay, let's, let's talk a little bit about the yards. Because I know T Kid was one of the guys who controlled the ghost yards. And I, and I believe that's where a lot of fiction uh, came out. But I don't let's know talk about, about your yards first. And then well, Esplanade, Esplanade, Burke, Bronx Park East was the main one. Trans Bronx Park East. Bronx Park East, the twos and fives. Twos and fives. Okay. But it was mostly the fives, but they had the twos there a lot. All right. That's 180. 180. Okay. 180. And you want to talk about how you get into some of the different yards, especially Esplanade, but all of them. The funny thing is, with 180th, yeah. you used to get into that yard right off the platform. Yeah. At the end of that platform, on 180th, there's a. a, a a staircase that goes up like this and goes and it goes right into the tracks. Huh. Right into the whole yard. We used to walk right up through there and walk right down back wow. then. Wow. With no problems. No. With no problems. Wow. Yeah. With no problems. We would go up doo -doo -doo -doo, and come right back out. Doo -doo -doo -doo, like that. <laughs> and if we, if we couldn't go that way, we would come from the streetway of, of um, Tremont. 
they was this old tracks that they had still. They cut them down now. Oh, okay. Where they had the 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 precinct. Now yeah. they built a new precinct in one eighty across the street. There was another one. We used to climb through there, walk through there, and cross over, and get into the the yard like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now, or our clubhouse. We had a clubhouse right under the tracks in Bronx Park East. NPC had a clubhouse like that. We used to call it the Founds. Mm. There used to be one rail on top, dirt, and it had like a, a beam, the track, mm -hmm. and Cap used to sit there, and that's where we used to hang out and watch all the trains. Yeah. And we had Bronx Park East. That was us. Yeah. That's where all the trains were lined up from there to Pelham Parkway all the way to Allenton. They used to line up these shits going all the way up. Yeah. And we had it all. Yeah. Those were all that shit. Then when I started going to different yards was with Met. Yeah. With Met NPC that owns Tough City. Mm -hmm. That's when I started going different places. Yeah. New Lots, Utica. Okay. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. The three yards. City Hall. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, we just started going all over. Me and Matt was going all city, hitting shit. Wow. Hitting shit. We were just doing mad throw. That's where he came up with the star. Mm -hmm. You know he has the star, Matt. Mm -hmm. That's where he invented it with me. Okay, okay. Right down 181st. Oh, wow. In, in Washington Heights. Yeah. We went through a, a railing. You know where the bus depot is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, right up the block from the bus depot, there's a, 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 a rail on the floor that you can lift up. Uh, and when you come down like that, Oh my God, I never saw so many trains in my life on the day. When I came out of there and stuck my head out of that tunnel thing like that, all you saw was trains lined up this way, trains lined up that. I was like, holy shit. But I didn't like them because yeah. those were the riffles. Those were the riffle ones. Not yeah, the you know, ones. nah, they were the riffle ones. But you know, we in there and I remember I started doing those throw ups. You know, I was doing the those throw ups and Mets like, nah, let's change this. And I said, change what? How are we going to do? And he said, I'm going to do a star. And I said, so what the hell am I going to do? Yeah. And he said, do a moon. I said, a moon? I'm not doing no moon, man. Get out of here. <laughs> so he started doing stars. But before him was Dez, the godfather of my son. He yeah. started the star, but he didn't keep up with it. Okay. Med took it as a trademark. But Med started it with me. And we started that on Washington Heights and one of you first, right That's under crazy. the ground. That's and I remember that night we went all over, and that's when the first that was the first time I caught a green train. A brand new green train I saw, and it was in the three yard. Ah. Uh, you know, but these are the yards that all these writers said the NPC can't go to. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And you were there. And we were in every yard. And I got tags to this day, still living in there. Yeah. In all these yards. Yeah. I still got tags, especially in the three yard. I used to stay in that yard. Yeah. I used to stay in that yard. Yeah. So, you know, Scheme and Dez and them say they owned it and they ran it. Come on, man. Kill that. So Dez, he just, the one who just passed away? Yeah, K. Slate. K. Slate, yeah, yeah. yeah. We weren't, we weren't, I mean, I met Dez, rest in peace, K. Slate, in Harlem. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I met him in Hall. I knew Trap. I went to school with Trap in Westchester Square. We oh, went really? to okay. yeah. We went to a 600 school together. Yeah. And I knew Trap, but I met Dez when I bumped into Trap and going to Harlem. But Trap was NPC. Uh, you get what I'm saying? Trap stood on the Cap's wing in the yeah. bakery for many years. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. For many years, Trap was part of us. Yeah. He didn't put up the crew, but he was NPC. Yeah. You know, he would, you know, because he was running with Dez and Days and these people. You know what I mean? Yeah. But he was with us. Yeah. He was with us. Well, what what about Esplanade? But before before we were recording, you were telling me some of the interesting ways you used to get in the Esplanade. Okay, we used to go through one that was called Rook Two on the side of um, Brady. It was on Brady and Barnes. Now it's got a big black gate and everything. But it was a regular fence thing. Yeah. Rook, Rook 2, cut it, Rook, cut it. And we'll go through there, climb up a tree, and the wall's right there. And we used to look through there. We had that one. You had the Gabology. That was the garbage place. That Rock 161, Flint, and Doc used to work at. And that was the lovely place. We used to work, walk in there, close the gate, and walk to the back of it. And there's a door. When you open the door... Right there, the whole layer. 
I know. That's I easy. I know. That's that was the whole layup. That's easy. <laughs> we had the most access to all the layup to and get into that shit. And then when the cops will come. Oh, the cops will come. We'll run right in, close the door, and go up to the roof and watch them. And they can't come in. It's private property. Hmm. They couldn't come in. And then when we wanted to scope the yard, you know, scope the tracks on Esplanade, we would go through there. We had a friend that lived off the project on, we I called it a project with the terrace, but it was on Esplanade. Yeah. And the building's right on the station. And he lived on the fifth or sixth floor. And we used to go to his balcony and we could see everything. We used to see all the cops hiding and we knew when, when it was getting raided and everything. Wow. <laughs> we had it all. Yeah, yeah. That's why they couldn't bus us. Yeah. I only got busted. I got busted for graph. Three times. Now, the first time I got busted, it was because I went back. Uh, I got to wait. Yeah. What happened was, it was in 87. 86? It, it's on my rap sheet, but it's 86 or 87. I was with Sane U8. Mm. I happened to do a Merry Christmas call in 87 with D, his partner. Yeah. Now, these were the new U8 kids. You know, Sane was dying out. Not dying out, but he wasn't really hitting the trains like that. And yeah. Dusta wasn't doing his thing no more like that. So these guys came up sane and deep. Now, we did a Merry Christmas call, me, D, and Dez. It said D, Dez, and Dose. Okay. And it was below zero that day. The cans were exploding, I remember. I got pictures of that car with the windows covered and everything. We did window down end to end. Now, sane wanted to do a car with me. Yeah. So I said, all right, we'll go do it. We're going to do window down. End to end. You know what I mean? But now, Sane did scene style, which I got mad. Mm. He did that overlapping style. Yeah. Which they followed scene style. You know what I mean? Yeah. Sane did a lot. So I was like, yo, why you use scene style? You know what I'm saying? Why you didn't do your own? He's like, oh, it is my own. So I did a dose. And I, I got the picture of that car, but it's already went over on the corner. Sento went over it with Key. Uh, and he wrote Bullwinkle. I don't know what the fuck Bullwinkle <laughs> means, but he wrote Bullwinkle on it. Well, he got his Bullwinkle back for it. <laughs> but um, we did the car. Now, all of a sudden, I hear footsteps coming on the track. We're on the stickouts. And I'm hearing footsteps. Now, Void, V O I D U A, was there too that night. And it happened to be maybe 10, 12 people on the tracks that night. Yeah, that's a lot of people. I'm yeah, painted there on Esperon. Yeah. Painted, everybody's running around. All of a sudden, I'm hearing <laughs> the rocks, and I'm hearing crushing. I'm like, yo, hold up. I start grabbing the cans. I'm putting it in the bag. Yeah. And he's like, what's going on? And I'm like, yo, but he was taking his time. I'm already done. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was already done. I did the, the window down, boom, the cloud. And then when I heard it, I'm like, wait a minute. I crawl, and I see the cop cut through. I come under the train, and I grab the bag, and I said, let's go. Now, Sane was a big, stocky kid. Yeah. He was supposed to be a football player. Yeah. That, well, well, I'll tell you the story what happened there. We take off. He's running behind me. We get towards Brady on the trestle. Not uh, Matthews, excuse me. It's yeah. Matthew and Brady. That trestle right there, right behind where Rook 2 is. When we get there, I tell him, hang and let yourself go and bounce. Just don't drop. Yeah. Because the floor was up on a hill like this. Oh, so okay. you could break your legs. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I come down first. Boom! I hit the floor. I take off. I'm thinking he's behind me. Yeah. I get to Bonds and I'm down maybe in the middle of, not even the middle of the block. I'm around the corner and Ed's there already. This other kid that was there, Ed, Ed one NPC, rest in peace. He was there. So I'm hiding behind the corner. I'm like, where is Sane? I told Ed, here, take the ping, take it home to my house. So he runs away with the cans and I'm like, all of a sudden I'm moving up. You know, I'm getting to the corner of Brady and, and Bonds and I hear screaming, ha! I said, oh, shit, they beating the shit out of him. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So I'm like, yeah. fuck. And I'm hearing screaming. Ah! So I go around, and I come back down. I'm crawling in the cars looking. When I see, I don't see nobody there but him on the floor. And he's holding his leg. So I'm like, what the hell is he screaming like that? So when I go, his bone, his bone came out from, from right here. This part of his leg, the whole bone came right out. Oh. So he's there. I took it, I took I took off my shirt and I grabbed his leg because blood is pouring out and I squeezed it in and he screamed more. So all of a sudden a cop car happened to come through. Whoa. Right? So when a cop comes through, he starts screaming and I'm like, yo, I let go. You know? I'm yeah. like, oh fuck, I'm gonna get fucked. I'm Spanish, the kid is white, they're gonna think I did something to him. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. So the cops get out and they're like, yo, what happened? I said, I don't know. I just found them right here. Yeah. I just found them. That's my shirt. I'm trying to help. Side. Now, mind you, the cops are looking for us up on the tracks. Yeah. They don't know what's going on yet. Yeah. All of a sudden, I try to walk away. When I'm trying to walk away, I thought the whole freaking tracks fell on me. The fucking cop. I don't mean to curse, but the cop oh, no. jumps up, jumps off on the trestle right on top of me. Boom. Wow. I hit that pavement like no tomorrow. I was out of breath and everything. Wow. So they grabbed it. The cops said they lying. They were writing. Blah, blah, blah. I'm after both of them. So they arrest me. They arrest him. And they got void. We were the only three. You know what I'm saying? So we get to the precinct or whatever. They don't give us no. They give us the DATs. My mom's come get us. We go to court. My mother had to pay, I think it was oh, almost a thousand dollars or some shit for the train. Yeah. They they made yeah. us pay for the train. You know wow. what I mean? For the damage. Oh, okay. No, for that whole train. Oh. Yeah, for that damage. Yeah, wow. for the damage. You know what I mean? They charged, I think it was a thousand or five hundred. I don't remember precisely. Yeah, you Damn. Okay. You know wow. what I'm saying? And Voy was there. His uncles were cops. I remember. And they were like stale fuck away from my nephew. I'm like, what the hell is this? Yeah. You know, so but I never got to see Saint again. Wow. That was the last time I saw Saint until four years ago. No, excuse me. Six years ago. Wow. Yeah, were these the two brothers, Saint Smith? No, yeah. those are other. That, that's another Saint. That's another Saint. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. I'm talking about Saint Ua. Saint Ua. Okay. They were out at the same time. Oh, uh, they were out at the same time. Yeah, they were out okay. at the same time All when right. that writing. They were out. Yeah. Uh, Ua was what crew? Ua was uh, Saint's crew, United Artists. United Artists. Okay. And um, I never got to see Sane again. You know? Wow. I always wonder what happened to him. Never yeah. got to see him. We had an NPC reunion party. A UA, NPC, you know, all the white crews or whatever. Yeah. And we had it at Tough City. And guess who I see in Tough City? Sane. Sane. Wow. And he said, I've been looking for you all these years, though, just to shake your hand and hug you and tell you how real you are. That you came back for me, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because ain't nobody going to come back. You know, yeah. once you away, you away. All that, I came back. Yeah. You know, I, I came back. I got busted. It is what it is. Did yeah. you have to serve any time with, with that one? No. Just a no. fine. I mean, that's a huge fine. Yeah, it was just my mother paid for it. I never did time for graffiti. Okay. I yeah. never did time for graffiti. I got another. I got busted another time. I took a tag on the wall. I ain't had no paint. They didn't find no can. The cop went and rubbed his finger on the wall. And he said, yeah, he did it. Let's go. Now, that time, they kept me in. They yeah. kept me for four days. And uh, then I got released. Yeah. You know, time served or whatever, but they kept yeah. me for four days on that time. And then the other time, I got bagged on Woodlock. Woodlock. I, got, I took a tag. I'm looking like this. And I said, all right. And I took a tag. Yeah. All of a sudden, I see these two Spanish cops come running. And I hit the marker. Boom. They search me. They couldn't find the marker. He's touching. He's touching. Me trying to be a wise ass. I get on the train. I, I get away. And I pull the marker out to the window. And I look, I'm like this, showing it to their face. They radio in to the next station. <laughs> you hear me? They radio in to the next station. Yeah. I'm on the train. I don't see no cops. I'm not thinking nothing. I'm just talking to my man. We bugging out. Ah, all of a sudden, I get snatched. Get over here. No. I'm like, yo, I thought I was getting robbed or something. They slam me on the floor. Boom, you want to be a wise ass? And then you see the other cops come there. I pulled the mark out. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that time. They took me in. They ran me through the whole shit. And I got out the next day. But yeah. it was just funny because my man told me, you the dumbest ass I ever met. You, how you going? You get away and you're going like this, yeah. intimidating them. But I pulled it out through the window. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But yeah. those were the best. But um, 241st Yard was okay. That's the two. That's the two yard. Okay. We used to climb through the walls. Now, if you go now, you see um, uh, tar. They put mad tar through the bricks. Oh. Because they were like okay. rock bricks that you can climb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it was hard to get into that yard. Yeah. Pove. I don't know if you heard of Pove. No. G U M P C P O V E. He used to write Pa. P O V E. Okay. Yeah, P O V E. He came from Yonkers. Hmm. That was his house. Okay. That was his house. I'll give it to him. Yeah. He yeah. had that yard locked. But the uh, the two yard was good, but I always liked the five yard better. Yeah. Okay. Five yard was the best. Yeah. Even though Brooklyn Brooklyn was cool, but it was a lot of tunnels. 
Yeah. A lot of them. I didn't like the home the home tunnels. I didn't like those. There was a spot over there. Tatch crew used to go. Dad's NPC went with them and painted over there. I didn't like it over there because you got trains flying. Yeah. You know what I mean? I didn't like that. Yeah. I didn't like, I didn't like to be closed in. Yeah. Mm. You know what I mean? I didn't like to be closed in. Utica was nice. Utica was real nice. Yeah. So that's a lot of action in your in your high school years. So what? So when you in high school, what high school were you going to at that time? And did did you go to class or you just? I used to go to homeroom. Just, you just went to homeroom. I used to go to homeroom. <laughs> I didn't go to school. I went to homeroom. And right out of homeroom, I would come and hang out with MPC. We would be at the steps. Okay. And we are partying, hardying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I used to throw a lot of hooky parties in my house. Okay. Oh, okay. oh, my God, man. The parties I threw in my house. I threw a lot of hooky parties in my house. But, yeah, nah, I used to just go. I went to Columbus. Okay. And then for Columbus, I got kicked out, and they sent me to Roosevelt. No, excuse me, not Roosevelt, Lehman. Lehman, okay. Lehman. And I, I don't even remember Lehman. Yeah, yeah. I'm being honest with you. Yeah, yeah. I remember going with my mother, and we registered and whatever. I think I might have went two times, and that was it. Yeah. Damn, seriously, wasn't going. No, I didn't go to school. I left school. I'm not going to lie to you. I left school in public school. Yeah. I oh, went yeah. in public school from fifth grade. I already was cutting out of school. Is, I is was that right. when you started watching, or when did you start watching movies with Cap? Y'all both in public school. That was it. Okay, so you were in public school. Okay, that's how long me and Cap go back. Yeah, he's still alive. School. Yes. Okay. Yes, thank God for that. But that's how long me and Cap go back. Yeah. From public school, and the funny thing, like I told you, we never did cars together. Yeah. Me and Cap hit the trains one time. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you, yeah, we rode because we, I was with the infamous Cap. We went one time, and this was when he was in his retirement already. Okay. It just happened to be by luck. I was going with Flint, and Flint didn't want to go. Yeah. And I kept begging him, come on, come on, bro, let's go. I got the pain. I'm going to treat you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And Cap happened to pop up right there that moment, and then Cap was like, I don't paint no more. I don't paint because he quit. Yeah. And then I kept saying, all right, then he said, come on. And we hit that one night. You know what I mean? Yeah. We hit that one night. They had double line because the way Cap taught us was you, you got guys that go and do a throw up or whatever right and they outline it yeah no cap thing was you do your throw up you fill it in and keep going all the way down when you finish that you come back on the other side and you do the same thing when you finish those 10 cars on that side you come and you start outlining again mm. now it's a risk because you could by the time you outline Cops could roll up, and then now you got all these fillings and no outlines. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay, okay. But it's the way you do it. Yeah. It's the way some days is good, some days is bad. I mean, there was times I did DEs and those, and I filled them in, and I couldn't get back to them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But that was the way we learned from Cap. Mm. That was the way we learned how to just bomb yeah. throw-ups. Yeah. Because at my time, it was throw-ups. Like BG said on his video. He went up with the throw-ups. It was throw-ups. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It was yeah. throw-ups. Yeah. Now, T-Kid and them, they were on the one lines. Yeah. Now, the ghost yard used to take every train that would come. You know what I'm saying? Now, he claims, I'm, I'll give it to him, you know, that's his part, that's his story. He ran the ghost yard. I don't know how, but I've been in the ghost yard. When we were NPC, it had walls, and we rode through in there, in and out. Yeah. All right. You know what I mean? I just laugh at Everybody claimed this. Everybody claimed that. I'm not taking it from them. Yeah. But I don't know where did you claim if you got a notorious crew that you had beef with in your yard. Yeah. yeah you get yeah, what I'm yeah. trying to say? Yeah. Now, you didn't come to my yard. Yeah. I bet you that. Yeah. You didn't come to my yard. You came to my yard in the times that NPC was in, in beef. That's when Slip and Colt had NPC. Because yeah. NPC started in 1977, you know, by Slip 3, Wedge, and Speed. You know what I mean? Speed I 3. I that question. How did it start? Yeah. They started NPC. And were, were they were they still very much in, in the game when you were in it? They no. Were hell there? no. Yeah. Slip, 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 Slip left in 82. Yeah. 82, he gave it up to Cap. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. He yeah. gave it up to Cap, and that's when Cap took it. Yeah. And formed NPC what it was. Yeah, cause, cause it. What, what was it like before Cap took it? What, 
MPC was uh, Slip was trying to take MPC on the cool level. They were cool. Slip was already down with OTB. Oh, okay. You get what I'm saying? MPC, OTB. Yeah. You know? They were already down with that. So they weren't going over nobody. They were just doing their cars. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they both had style. Yeah. Slip was a beast. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? They were elevating like crazy and cold. If Coke with it, Coke did a couple of cars that Henry got pictures of, that that was amazing at that time. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So imagine if they would still been going. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know. And then Slip came back six years ago and started going crazy. That's when he did the book. Mm-hmm. You know, like ten years ago, and he did the book of MPC, but he rushed everything. Yeah, because the book itself, it's MPC, but it's not all MPC. You know, you got people there, it's not NPC. You put pictures in there just to fill up a book. Yeah. You should have told the true story behind it. And then you got, you put Sha 147. Sha 147 was never NPC. Mm. You know what I mean? Never. Yeah. Just because he hanged with Slip, that doesn't mean he was NPC. But Slip said he put him in NPC. Sha never put it. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? So yeah. you put them in the book and then you got them in the memorial page <clears throat> with all the NPC guys that died. How are you going to do that? That's like a totally disrespect. Mm. You know I, what I'm I saying? I didn't buy the book. I, I know the publisher that it did. So. Yeah, I'm all over that book. You all over that book? Okay. Yeah, I'm all in that book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got my train cards in there and whatever. Yeah, yeah. But it's just weird. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not everybody was NPC. Yeah. You ever heard of Agent? How you, how, you, how you spell it? A-G-E-N-T. Agent. No. He used to be the partner of Scheme. Okay. Uh, okay. Scheme and Agent. Scheme and Agent. That's when, they used, that's when Scheme used to write T and T. Okay. The Magnificent T. No, not TMT. TNT, like dynamite. Like dynamite. Oh, okay. He don't put that crew up no more. He don't put that He up. don't tell you. I don't know why. Right. But that was his crew. That's what they used to put up. TNT. He ain't put TMT. Okay. What, what's T, what's I ain't TMT never seen Scheme with TMT. Okay. Until okay. now. Uh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The same way all that lettering was done by, by Dez. Yeah. If you look at it. But, you know, that's their stories. Okay. Right. But, um, basically, that's, that's how we did it. That's how we went about it. You know? The racking was that. Uh, the yards was that, and we, I used a couple of aliases, I did Poison, mm. you know, I had a piece on Tremont, Case 2 had, right, Case 2 had it across the street, with Cento, you know that art museum they got over there, that you see from Tremont? Oh, the, um, the graffiti old thing, yeah. no, 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 that's like the Bron- Bronx River Arts exactly. Center, right? Exactly, Cento and Case did the wall on the side of it. They try to start a, a Hall of Fame there. Yeah. Later on down the years, some T kids, scene and all of them. They never lasted. Before them, it was us. Okay. I did a dose there. Yeah. Or this was towards uh eighty nine. Oh I did a dose there, all colorful. That shit didn't even last a week. <laughs> you know what I mean? They smashed it. Boom. Yeah. Uh tightened them. They smashed it, TFO. I came back and I did a poison. I went away for maybe three years or something like that. Yeah. I come back, that poison was still on that wall and nobody wow. knew. The only person that knew I did that piece, and I don't know how he figured it out, but he said by the styles. And the whole piece, you wouldn't even think it was me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Was bomb five. Okay. He's the one that gave me the picture to that piece. Okay. Because they buffed it after I came back. You know, it was still there, but they had buffed it, cleaned up the wall. And I'm in Baum's house on on Burke. And we're there. I come over and we're chilling. And he goes, yo, let me show you something. He throws the picture. And I said, oh, shit. I didn't say it was me. I didn't get excited. And he goes, yo, that piece is mighty familiar. And I'm like... Who is this? He goes, that's you. And you I was yeah. like, how you going to know that's me? What are you talking about? Yeah. He goes, that's you. I can tell. Look, ah, but yo, damn, you fooled everybody. And that piece stood there all that time. Wow. And nobody touched it. No, I did Poison. I did SIE3. SIE3, okay. My brother was AO1. 
AIL, he went up. I took him a couple of times on the track, but I'm yeah. the one that kept his name alive still okay, to this day. Okay. A A I L. Did Did he ever join a crew or anything? Or? My brother's an NPC. Oh, he's NPC. Okay, yeah, okay. he's NPC. He's NPC too. Okay. My brother's you guys are loyal to NPC. Huh? You guys are loyal to. I'm NPC. A, I'm a NPCs forever, right. forever NPC. Yeah. Okay. That's to good. death. Yeah. That's good. Because it's it was not just a crew; it was a family, and I fought for it. I fought in that. Being in a white neighborhood, in a racist neighborhood at that time with Russians, Polacks, Jews, and Albanians, and every other freaking thing that came off that boat. Yeah, all right, all right. Stay with you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I had to go through it. Yeah. Every day was a fight. Every day I had a black eye or something. Because I, I love when people say they have fights, but you don't got no marks. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but um, I used to have black eyes, man. My mother used to say, who won the fight? <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I used to stay with black eyes, bro. Damn. You hear me? You was in the midst. Hold I on. was fighting every day, every other day, getting chased. And, oh, my God. That's why I never respected jumping. I never respected that from people. Jumping. You know, you jumping people. And that was back then in the 80s. That was a big shit back then. Oh, we, everybody got jumped. Yeah. And... I never used NPC to go against anybody. Yeah. Even though I was NPC and I had my boys with me, but I would not use them to go get at you. I would come at you my own. Yeah, yeah. That's why my respect was so hard and people fear me yeah. a lot. Mm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Not to just brag because I, I bleed just like you. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just how far you willing to take it. Yeah. yeah you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. That was the difference. I would take it to the end. Yeah. But it was how far you would take it. You know, and... NPC, yeah, it's it's a it's a way of life for us and everything. So, you you mentioned a little bit about uh, the mass incarceration system and what what was kind of what what was like your entry point? Did, was you like doing other stuff that brought you into the mass incarceration outside of graffiti? Well, if you want to talk about it, you don't have. To. I mean, at the time, yes. I'm not proud of it. That's a life I try to push away. You know what I mean? Yeah. And forget. Um, I try, I mean, I was in a hand-to-hand -hand drug dealer. I was in drug crews. You That's know? dangerous. I was in drug crews, but I was mostly the enforcer. Yeah. Oh. You get what I'm trying to say? Yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. People will come at me mostly for enforcing jobs. Yeah. You know, because of my reputation, and I was not one to play with. Yeah. To this day, I have a way of talking with people, and writers still fear me. And it, it's it's wild. I bug out on it. You know what I'm saying? But then again, I know my reputation, so I know why people is not just looking at me; they're looking at behind me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm trying to push that away. Yeah. All right. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I never try to mix graph with, with, with that, but I always do with the graph. Yeah. I wish I would have stood longer with it. And I, what I mean by that, longer with it, maybe I would have never seen incarceration. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? Mm. Yeah. Because graph, graph took me to a place that nothing else could have took me. You know, it, it gave me a mind to think. It made me be me, you know, it brought out who I am, you know, even though I'm Dose, even my son's name is Dose, by mm. birth certificate, oh, you know wow. what I'm saying? Oh, okay, okay. Oh, wow. My son's name is Dose. I didn't give it to him. Yeah. <laughs> His mother did sweets. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I want you to continue, but talk about being a parent, because you mentioned that a lot. So it seems, I mean, you got your street life, but you seem to be a parent. So that's well, I'm not going to say I'm a parent, okay? I mean, I have my kids, yes. I didn't raise them because I was away from them a lot. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I love kids. Don't get me wrong. I love kids. And I have uh, five of them. And I'm a grandfather. You get what I'm saying? There you go. <laughs> See that? There you go. Yeah. Um, I was brought up family oriented. You know, like tied with the family. Mm -hmm. My mother always had us every weekend in my grandfather's house. Yeah. In okay. Jackson Avenue. Every holiday. And it was always the family, the family. I pushed away from that. You know? 
And it was hard because I, I missed it a lot. But being incarcerated and doing that, I try I got it, I got it back. You know what I'm saying? With the thing. Yeah. And family's the most important thing. You know what I mean? I mean, we can do things like I tell some people. You know, you got family members that might be strung out or might rob from you or might dead. But at the end of the day, blood is blood. Things could be forgiven. Okay, you might not forget, but they could be forgiven. Mm -hmm. Family's family. You know, family's not going to be here long. We're not going to be here long. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I told a couple of guys the other day I had some words with but I didn't speak to and I grew up 40 years with. Per just died from FX. I know Per. Per was Met's um, brother-in-law, ex-brother-in-law. I know Per for years mm -hmm. for when he was Tatch crew. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how long I know Per. And I painted with Per. We did a train together in, in Tough City. Okay, okay, yeah. You know yeah, what I yeah. mean? Me, Risk, and Per. And he was the one that gave me the point at one time when I came home. Because I came home, I didn't know this new paint. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, I was with the Rustos and Krylons. And I, I come home to this Montana's and the way the cab, I couldn't spray right. I couldn't get the flow of it. And Perk goes, yo, it's just paint. I remember that. I always stood in my head. Perk was like, it's just paint. If you mess up, you can do it again. It's just paint. But Perk was the one that showed me the trick how to do the bubbles that it would look like a bubble. You know, I would do them circle-wise and just spray it and make it bubble. But Perk told me, flick your hand in. And I started finessing the cans. Yeah. You know what I mean? On the paints now. And I started learning how to go closer with it. Because in the Rustos, you just, you know, with the fat cap spray, woo woo, and we in. But then I started getting into the paint now that they got the, yeah. Mon the Montanas and all that and the different caps. This shit was crazy. Yeah. They ain't, we ain't had none of this. Yeah. I used to have to sit down and take a needle and go in through the caps. I used to steal from my mother's appliance stuff to spray it. None of the caps would be on the freaking things. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No caps. Yeah. And I'm in the room sticking needles and melting it and going in and making your foams wow. and all this other shit. Mm -hmm. wow, yeah. You know, I remember going with Matt and we would go racking caps. I'm like, racking caps? I'm not going to steal no caps. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah. when, like, when we were talking about the racking, yeah. we stopped the shopping cart rack, you know, because the guys didn't want to go. I didn't have, the, I didn't have a car then, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So I couldn't get up to Connecticut or whatever. But I always ran with Met. Me and Met got almost a 40, 40 and something years relationship. Wow. Me and Met from Tough City. That's my brother to the end. You know what I'm saying? And me and Met used to go. Yeah. But Met put me on to the, to the hamper box. What I mean by that is we would go into Rickles and all these stores and we'll go to the section and get a hamper. Okay. And you know how big the box of the hamper is, yeah, right? Yeah, the hamper. Yeah. Put the clothes in, yeah. Okay, we take the hamper out. Because everything is there. The name, the razor, the tape to take the box back. <laughs> oh, yeah. We will open the box and we start stacking it up. Yeah. With paint. Okay. Yeah. All right? Yeah. We tape it back. Boom. It looked like the box never been opened. Yeah. Then I get the other shopping cart and we do the other one. Now I got one, he got one. Yeah. We're pushing it. All of a sudden, we're looking through the floor. And we're looking for the pay tags. You know the little red stickers that they will put and say pay? Yeah. You will find them at that time through the floor. <laughs> they will be on the floor. You know what I'm saying? We'll pick, put it right on the box. Got the store. Wow. We'll put it right out the box and walk right out the store with it. Wow. <laughs> Ingenious. I know. Just like that with Met. And I used to go every week with Met. Wow. Me and Matt used to go there. We used to go for paint. We used to go for money. Yeah. What I mean by money rack is we used to go in and, and get aspirins, bears, Tylenols, the big shits. Yeah. And he showed me this. We would go with a brown bag, walk in, fill it up with bears, aspirins, whatever the freaking shit, and then put paper towels on top. Mm. And it looked like we were coming. We just came into Rickles from a grocery store, so they're not checking yeah. that bag. Yeah. And we used to walk out like that. <laughs> we used to walk out like that. Wow. But that, I never had a problem with the paint. Because I used to take it by bulk. Yeah. We used to do it by bulk. Wow. That was the best. Because I said, if we're going to get busted, let's get busted by bulk. Let's not just get busted with two, three cans. Yeah. But when we first started, 
I didn't take big cans. I took, like I told you, I took testers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? I would take a couple of testers and markers. Markers yeah. was easy. Yeah. And I was in Pelham Parkway. Yeah. Pelham Parkway back then was sweet. We would walk into a store. It was no problem. Yeah. Nobody was watching. Not like now. Shit, shit, shit. Crazy now, but yeah. it was sweet. Yeah. Allen yeah. Avenue, well, see, Gun you Hill. You can't even go in there. Can't. Let yeah. me tell you something. I was in PA. I mean, not PA. Uh... Uh, up on, uh, uh, um, damn, man. My mother had a house up there with two freaking places. Oh, Poconos. Oh, okay. My mother owned a house in the Poconos. And I was up there a couple of years ago. I got a picture. It's on, Inst it's on Instagram. All right. I couldn't believe it. I walk in through there, and I used to, you know, I go with my mom's. I'll be like, yeah, I'll be back. I'm walking. I'm looking for the paint. Yeah. I'm always looking for the paint. And when I go, there's no gate on this. No, you hear me? Oh my God. Okay. Yo, I got a picture of it. It's on It's on Instagram, my Instagram. Right. I got a picture of it. I'll show you. And I see, and I find school bus yellow, popsicle orange, colors that you cannot get in New York no more. Right. Wow. And I got pictures. I'm like this. I walked out of there with 50 cans. <laughs> <laughs> with 50 cans. And you still got it in you. And you I walked out of there with 50 cans. <laughs> and I'm outside. My mother's like, what you do? I said, I didn't do nothing. And I'm pulling the cans out in the back seat of the car. And she's like, Oh my God. You know, my stepfather. Yeah. You know, and he's there driving and he don't know. He, well, I think he don't know, but he's not stupid because yeah. I came up there with no paint and all of a sudden I got this fucking paint. Yeah. So my mother's like, You ain't going to this store ever again. Don't you ever. If I tell your father, I said, My father, what father? My father's dead. And then, but, you know, my stepfather, he's yeah, like yeah, my father. Yeah. He raised yeah, me. Yeah. Yo, yeah, I love him to death. Yeah. I love him to death. He all raised right, me. All right. See, that's your real family, man. You've been like, I've seen it. No, I know. But, um, it was funny. I came with, and I had, I had to take pictures, and I posted it up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I was posting pictures up of the new trains when I came home. Yeah. I was hitting them. Yeah. I was going every night. Yeah. I was going to Espinon, jumping on the tunnel. My mother's like, "Where you going? Where you going?" And I said, "I'll be right back." And she hears the back, click, click, click. And she's like, "Really?" I said, "I'll be right back." And then I come back. I'm like, "Yo, look, I just did this." And she's like, "Keep it up." And I was hitting insides. Yeah. I was hitting the fire train. Yeah. This is like six years ago. Six I years was ago, okay. smashing them on the new trains. I was hitting these shits every day from six o'clock at night to like 12. Yeah. I was smashing them. I would just take Tadaya coming back from Esperanza to Daya coming back. Yeah. Coming back. I wouldn't go to 180. Yeah. I would yeah. just hit them and then I would just keep smashing them, smashing them. And I was posting it up, posting it up. And Ben was like, yo, are you crazy? Take that shit off. They're going to grab you. <laughs> and I was like, oh, word. And that's when I used to tell you, I used to take my girl to work. Yeah. And I used to be smashing it. And then I stopped. I got banned. I couldn't take her to work. She didn't want me to go no more. Yeah, because I was jumping on tracks and stuff. Oh, yeah. You want to tell, tell that story? That, wait, what, how, how many years ago was that when you jumped down? Uh, this was like... Four, four, four years ago. Okay, yeah, you like still that. got it in you, bro. <laughs> oh yeah, I was, I was telling him, um, one day I'm taking my girl to work. She works towards Dyer, and I'm on the tracks. I got a can. She don't know I got the can. She checked me before because she's like, "Why you want to take me to work?" And she, I used to tag in front of her, and she used to get pissed. You know what I mean? Because she's like, yo, you're going to get arrested? That's all she was worried about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because she knows me since I was a kid. Oh, okay. Let me talk you know what I mean? Yeah. She, yeah, but we always had a crush for each other yeah, until yeah. I came now. You know what I mean? We got it. But um, I'm like this. I see the train coming, the downtown. I'm like, yeah. And I see the uptown, but it's still all the way towards Bronx Park East on the bend. But I see the light. Like. Yeah. So I go like that and I tell her, yo, hold me down. And she's like, what do you mean? Because she used to, she walks all the way to the end of the platform to smoke a cigarette. So I tell her, you're going to get caught smoking a cigarette, I'm telling you. So I said, just hold me down. She's like, what do you mean? And I jump on the tracks. I'm catching the train that pulls into the station. And I'm hitting it. Bang, bang. I'm doing outlines. Those, boom. I did these, not those. I'm doing these. Bang, bang, bang. I hit two trains. All of a sudden, I'm trying to run back. The other train comes. It blocks me in. My girl's on the platform. She gets on the train to look out the window. People are looking out. I'm hiding behind the green divider. I'm like, oh, shit, I'm trapped in here. I said, freak this. I jet down the, down the, the, um, 
the stickouts. The stickouts is the outside part of the, the trains. Yeah. And I'm going that way to go towards Rook 2 on yeah. Kabology. And I got the cell phone. Where are you? I said, I'm out here. I'm all right. I'm good. And she's like, ah, start spazzing. No, you ain't. You got my nerves like this. Yeah, I used to do that like crazy. Jump right off the tracks and just keep hitting them. You ain't scared, man. Wow. The only you thing. Know, you just know where the third rail is. Then you know where nothing. Well, yeah. That, I know I spent out with my eyes closed. Oh, you, okay. You know, okay. <laughs> I know I spent out with my eyes closed. But there's something different. When I went, when when I started hitting the new, the new trains, yeah. like six years ago, I started hitting them. And I went into the tunnel, I got scared. Yeah. Because the third rail was buzzing. And I never heard the third rail oh, ever buzz. Huh. You know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. yeah. And I'm like, what the hell? And mind you, when I stood on that third rail, I was what, 12, 13? Yeah. I might have weighed 80 pounds, 90 pounds. You know what I mean? Not now. When I stood on that shit, that third rail panel went like this. I was like, oh shit. And the new trains now. There's no room in the tunnel. Yeah. They too fat. Yeah. Oh, the body's wide. Yeah. The body's wide, so yeah. there's no room. I was like, I'm, I'm stuck. I couldn't even do the throw up. I'm like, yeah. yo, what the hell? I yeah. remember this shit had room. We used to run through this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. I said, maybe I got older. I got wider. But no, it was the train is, it's like this. It's not flat. It comes around yeah. like this. And the third rail got more power to give those new trains. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why those shits light up on fire. That's why I don't like them tunnels. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Those shits grab you. They light up. Yeah. And then with the fume of the paint. Forget about and it. And especially that Euro paint. That shit is toxic. Yeah. A lot of that paint. You know that, right? That Euro paint is toxic. Mm -hmm. A lot of that shit is car paint. And, you know, you got to wear masks and stuff. They, yeah. they don't give a shit the chemicals. Yeah. You know, Rusto and them took out the lead. That's why the Rusto drips now. Yeah. You know what I mean? If yeah. you go too close, that shit drips. It doesn't cover. It's not the same paint. Yeah. You know? So, so those you know thought about uh, doing canvases and being in galleries? I think I I would love to be in galleries. Yeah. I would love to be in galleries. I did a lot of I got a lot of canvases done in the house. I sold a couple. Yeah. I started doing slaps. Uh, the slaps, mail. Yeah, I sold slaps. Map, yeah. I sold slaps. The maps. The I map. did that. I'm a licensed tattoo artist. Oh, yeah, because Tough City is... Uh... I was working in Tough City. I was working in Tough City for three and a half years, and then I, I left. Not because of anything. I'm still with Tough City, but i rather do tats on my own. I don't have to split the money. All right, so you got clients. They call yeah, you and you yeah, you know, they call me or whatever. Yeah, I go to you, you or go whatever. To me. Okay, yeah, right. Then I stopped. I took a froze, you know what I mean? Because I, uh, how could I say? I get bored of things quick. Yeah, yeah. You know, and the tattooing... Med pushed it on me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because he's like, yo, your art, you know how to draw, man. Yeah. You know, it's not just graffiti. You know how to draw. You can do, I could do portraits. I could do this. I could mm -hmm. do that. But I got bored of it because it was constantly the same shit over and over. Yeah. Yeah. It was, and then I would stay in the yard and paint. That's what I, that's what I missed mostly at a tough city. Yeah. You know, I could paint any day there. Yeah. But just being there, I was back into painting. I painted with majority, a lot of your people. Wow. And yeah. I never been to Europe. Yeah, yeah. I painted with them in Tough City. Because they, they have guest artists come. Yes. From all over the world. And I painted and with a lot of them. Yeah. You know? And then I painted with Re. I painted with writers that I, I, I looked up to. Yeah. You get what I'm trying to say? When I was a kid, that okay. I seen pictures exactly. that they quit. Yeah. When I got into graffiti, they already quit. Yeah, 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 yeah. The only reason I got to see their pictures was I might be in your house yeah. and I'm looking at your photo album. Right, yeah. And Cav, like the kid I was telling you, Cav sent those partner. They were, they were, they, he was a photographer. He was taking pictures. They made those new books. I came out of one of their books. Um, uh, the the ones from the '80s, the graffiti of the '80s or whatever, all from the platform. Okay. Straight from the platform. I'm okay. in the second book. Oh, that's the same publisher I work with, Schiffer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Cav did the first one by himself, and then the second one is Cav and MK. I'm in the second book. Um, I got the pictures from them. Yeah. And oh. one day, MK, MK took a bunch of pictures from his brother. I don't know. He came to my house with a big-ass black garbage bag mm. full of pictures. Wow. Right? And mind you, I had writers all day in my house. Yeah. You know what I mean? 
I have writers all day in my house. Bio's brother, his younger brother, I think he got a younger brother or something. He used to hang with my brother. And he had him in the house. Wow. You know what I'm saying? But I never got with Tat Screw. I never got with them. I used to be with Bass. Yeah. That started Tat Screw with Bio. Yeah. I was always with Bass. You know what I'm saying? We were tagged together and all this. And I was at, and Bass used to bring other writers. Yeah. To meet me. And he'd be like, yo, he's MPC. You know? And people always put that face. And I used to be like, what's with the face? What's with the comment? Yeah. I don't say nothing about your crew. But, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Kurt, you... you, you no, nah, we could... Uh, I, I think uh, I wanted to continue on a little just a bit about how, how do you feel about the, the, uh, the street art world today, the graph world today. It's like a global thing that, you know, a lot of originators come from the Bronx. And, and you know, hip-hop... Breaking this whole culture is global now. So how do you feel about being involved with it in the early days? I mean, the culture comes from the Bronx, but like they always pushed it as Taki 183 was the one that started it yeah. from Manhattan, and yeah. before him was Stitch. Well, Phase Two is a big name too. Right? Oh yeah, yeah, Phase Two too is big names. But I'm saying at that time because yeah. they say that one that broke graffiti here. Will was uh, for Philadelphia. Uh, oh, Cornbread. Cornbread. Everybody agrees with that, but it's true. No, but I'm just saying, yeah, I'm just yeah, letting yeah. you know how it was set. But, yeah. and then they say Taki was the one that started it. Then they said the other guy. Listen, graffiti's been around longer than all of us. This shit's been around since caveman days. Right, okay. Yeah. All right, yeah, it right. was not called graffiti. Right. But the writing's been around since the Roman days, since the yeah. caveman days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the way I look at art right now is amazing. The graph has, is I mean, Europe took this shit to another level. And New York writers took it to another level also. But they stood with the original styles. Even though you got your little wild styles, you know, Task Crew, FX, NPC, COD, you know what I mean? All these other crews. But you can still see the original New York flavor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, you know, you ever heard of Kit 17? Kit 17. From MG Crew. Kim, yeah, I think I heard him through Butch. Oh, yeah, that's my boy, um, Kit. I used to rock, oh, he used to write with Mark 198. Okay. And it's crazy because when I met Kit, I used to see his name up and everything. I'm MG too, also. But when I met Kit, mm-hmm. he's seeing me paint. And he's like, damn, you could tell you from the old school, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not because the way I paint it, because I elevated with new style too. I'm always doing different styles. That's I always good, yeah. always in black books, always blasting shit. That's why I laugh when they say NPC is a bunch of toys. That was always the comment. Mm-hmm. That it was always said. And it was that that we were toys. It was just, I'm not gonna waste my time doing a car and you're gonna come and destroy it. You know, I got beef with you. And if I don't got beef with you, I got beef with your other man, so you're going to come and destroy it. So I'm just going to keep doing throw-ups. You know what I mean? I'll do my pieces in the schoolyards or in walls or whatever, but I'm going to let you know. Now, if you want to battle, we can battle. Yeah, yeah. But either than that, don't make a comment that you guys don't know. You know what I'm saying? Just don't go because of cap. Because regardless, at the end of the day, hey, you know, you say he couldn't do a straight letter or he couldn't do this. The man invented his own alphabet, man. Ain't nobody ever invented a seat like that. You know what I mean? Nobody invented that style. Yeah, it's, it's good. I'm telling you. You know what I'm saying? You so, know it instantly. like he said it in his video, he, he, it is what it is. Yeah. yeah. So, you know what I mean? We, we Everybody elevates to everything, you know? Yeah. Everybody got their own styles. Yeah. You know, scene happened to be the big thing in my, in my neighborhood. In the area. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Everybody, I just never looked up to scene. Yeah. I didn't chase him like everybody I grew up with did. I didn't do that. Yeah. He lives in Europe now, right? Uh, no. He lives in Vegas, I think, or somewhere. Oh, he lives, okay, all right. I didn't chase him. Yeah. And scene really didn't like me. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because we had a couple of incidents. You know, when he had his little studio up in Bronx Park East, yeah. which like I told you, guys get, you know, I won't mention names, but I held a couple of guys, I held a couple of guys hostage there. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't let them come out. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. We didn't let them come out. Yeah. yeah. And 
scene happened to call Cap, and Cap was like, NPC boy's going wow. You know what I'm saying? So, and then I was in, in scene's tattoo shop. Met work for him. When, okay. And, uh, and I came, I just came home or whatever, and I get a tattoo done on my leg. Yeah. No, I get, I get this one done. The okay. Reaper with the Pit. I get that done in, in scene's place. And I met, hugs me and everything, and scene's like, yo, what, what's up? You got to pay. And I said, excuse me? Pay what? Yeah. I'm paying what? Yeah. I'm dose. And he was like, oh, yo, oh, oh. But he, he was getting me confused with D-O-Z. Ah, with Doze. TC5. Oh, uh, Doze yeah. Green. Doze you know what I'm saying? Yeah, he was yeah. getting me confused. Yeah. So Met was like, nah. So he got into some words with Met behind that. And I told Met, what? Yeah. So I was going to come back to the shop. Yeah. And Matt's like, nah, just leave it alone, leave it alone. You know what I'm saying? So I never parlay with, with scene yeah. like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I give him his props. Don't get me wrong. You know, I, I, like, I like a lot of his work. He did it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't go with the title Godfather, but... Uh, <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? But hey, everybody got their own thing. Everybody got their own uh, style. Yo, I, I mean, I, I can't say... Somebody could be something or something. Everybody did it. We all played a part in this. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. You know, like when I met Riff, I met Riff six years ago. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And we were in Tough City. And I'm sitting there, and Riff is, he didn't know me, I didn't know him, and I just didn't like being around the people, like I told you. Yeah. You know, I had war with you. I had beef with you. I went at you. I hit you. And now you want to hug me and drink a beer? I can't do that. They get away from me. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, I'm in the back and I still, in Mets, like, yo, you got to just chill, bro. Calm down. <laughs> You're not in the yards. You know what I'm saying? I'm not. And I'm like, man, get out of here. NPC's in the building. What's up? Who want it? You know what I'm saying? And I'm in, in, in tune. I'm getting the boys all hyped up. And Mets, like, yo, calm down. Don't do that. And we got the vests on. And I'm like, man, put some rock on, man. You know? And Riff is sitting there and he starts... He came out with this uh, first generation, second generation, third generation. And I'm listening to him. And he's, he's going at it with Tune. Tune NPC. That's one of my bros. I got 40-something years with him, too. I love that dude. And um, they going at it on generations. So I look at Tune, and I'm like, yo, what is this dude talking about, bro? And Tune's like, yo, just leave it alone. I said, nah, I ain't leaving nothing alone. So we had a bench. You know how the bench is, the picnic tables? So Riff is sitting like this. So I, I'm like this. I turn around. And I sit facing Riff. And I'm like, what you just said? Repeat what you just said to me. And he looks at me. He's like, who are you? And I say, I'm Dose. I'm Dose NPC. He's like, yeah, what year you started? I tell him, boom. And he's like, yeah, what trains? And I tell him. And I said, what trains you? Oh, I left in such and such. But I wrote this name, that name, this name, that name. So... You gotta remember, all these other writers left yeah. when I got in the game. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Riffin already left. They yeah. already all left. Yeah, yeah. But I seen pictures of all their works. Yeah, yeah, you see, yeah. Not all their works, yeah. but I seen Some pictures. Some of them, yeah. I didn't know if he was that name and that name and that name. Okay, yeah. you clarify that. I'll give you that. You yeah. saying that's you. Yeah. He said, yeah. So I when I tell him, he goes, Yeah, you in the fourth generation. I said, whoa. Slow your road, bro. Yeah. Now you got it all wrong. You get what I'm saying? I'm yeah. from the 80s. I don't know where you're coming from with this generation shit. You know what I'm saying? Because how could I be the fourth generation if the trains were gone already? Mm. You get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. There's only three generations in the graph. Yeah. You got the 70 riders, you got the 80 riders, and the ending of the 80, the trains was gone. Yeah. So the, the, the 90 riders started hitting the streets. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So how you get fourth generation? So that's how me and Riff met. And then we became best friends like this. <laughs> that's what I thought. That's what I thought. That's we became, yeah, that's my boy right that's there. It, he it, stays at Toon's house. He goes up there to eat and whatever. I haven't seen Riff in a minute. Yeah, yeah. Ever I was since, last night. Was last ever, last since, night. Uh, ever since they got, yo, ask him about me. He's right. going to tell you. Riff, right. no, I don't play. Riff right. been there with it. Riff okay. seen actions at Tough City with me. All right, cool, cool. Ask him. You tell him. Yo, yeah. with those NPCs, he's going to be like, what? Because I'm curating a show in July with Riff, 170, uh, Dome, D-O-M-E. Oh, the, um, Dome, Dome. Dome from, um, um, that, what's that crew, uh, 
That's Rozzy Roz people. Um, and not, Fantasy Childs or some shit like that. And not N A C. So, uh, NAC. Yeah, NAC. So those are NAC on 43? I don't know. They didn't give me his... Uh, Spanish guy with glasses? I don't know. It's, it's Riff show. So I'm curating it with Riff, right? And it, it's going to be slaps and maps. Oh, okay. We're not going to do canvas. Okay. It's going to be slaps and maps. It's going to be in July. Okay. At a, a place called uh, Village Works. Okay. So I've been curating shows. So uh, I did... I did... The last show I did was with uh, Coast. And that ended... To end it yesterday. Oh, I just saw that. I saw when he posted it up on Instagram. That was yeah. his show? That's his show. I'm going to be curious. Oh, you, you're the one that did Kirk, his show? Yeah, Kirk Boone. Yeah. That's why I asked you about canvases. I got canvases, man. I got yeah, a lot yeah. of canvases. I got yeah, some nice talk. work. We can talk. Yeah. I'll talk. give you my number. Yeah, yeah definitely, yeah, man. We can definitely talk. But, uh, no, that's good that, you you know, you you, you know, experience it early on. You you see the growth. Of course. And stuff like that. And, Imagine like traveling to Europe. I mean, that's like big time to see like you being recognized. And oh yeah, that's, that's, I mean, I got great. guys from Europe writing me from Instagram and all this, and yo, and once they hear MPC, and I got dudes that I didn't even know knew me from Europe. You know what I'm saying? Like one of them, I, I met him with his wife. They came and got married, Zuki, and he's from London or something. Yeah. And he came and he wanted. He was telling my man Toon. Because Toon was the one that was getting me to speak to other writers. And I'm yeah. like, I ain't talking to that guy, man. Get out of here. Get him out of here, bro. Yeah, yeah, Get yeah. this dude out of here, man. But Toon was like, yo, chill, man. Chill, bro. Things change. You know, this is not graffiti. Is now. I said, no, it's not. This is not graffiti, dude. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and then I look at it. I'm like, damn, look at us. A bunch of old men, bro. And we still write it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then look at the other generation before me. The first generation. Yeah. Checker 170. Yeah. Yeah. Riff. And all of them, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. Riff just started writing. Riff would not do no painting. Yeah. He just started painting. He just started again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no. What I mean was he was not going to paint because people was not giving him his recognition. Yeah. That's, he just started painting now again. Okay. He would come and hang out, but he would not do nothing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. Now, you got Checker. You got Dash. Now, you got Rocky 184. You know what I mean? Like, I, 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 I watch it. You All know, right, that's I, cool. That's cool. I, so you I give it to every. You gotta go to Miami to the museum, man, because that's a. Tribute. That's gonna be a, a weird thing because, Cat runs that. Yeah, right. Cat, that's right. And Cat always want always wanted to interview me, but we always had. Bump heads. Mm. We never got to meet each other. Interesting. You get what I'm saying? But I'm down with RIS. Ghost is my man. Okay. That's my boy right there. Oh, see, that's the next show. Huh? That's the show they got now. Who, that's Ghost? Yeah. Yeah, that's my boy he right there. He went down yeah. there. The last time I saw Ghost, when he came to see me in Tough City. Okay. And he took a tag in my booth. Yeah, he Now, got, that's my boy. He got and a solo he, show. I'll tell you a funny story with Ghost. The way I met Ghost was, we were in 116th Street. And I was with Man One. And that was the Zooty time yeah. and whatever. And we out there, it was in... in it was maybe 7, 8 o'clock, I think. You know, it wasn't too late, but not whatever. And I see this white dude come out the tunnel, you know, all dirty looking with paint. We thinking it's men. I yoke him up. Bam! We got him yoked up. <laughs> and, and Ghost is there. Yo, I'm Ghost. I'm Ghost. I'm like, what? What? I'm like, God. Oh, shit. All right. So we stood that night hanging out. Man went home. Me and Ghost stood. But Ghost had beef with Cope at that time. Mm. And I took him to Cope's house. You know what I'm saying? The yeah, 170. Yeah. That's how I am. Yeah. I mean, you want to be tough guy? We're going to see who's tough. Yeah. So I told Ghost, come on. And Ghost was like, for real? Yo, he lives here? I said, yeah. He started smashing the whole block on 170. Bang, 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 bang. And we go to Cope's house. I'm not going to. Ghost stays on the staircase. And I knock on the door. Bang, bang. And at that time, Cope's wife, Fousey, opens the door. And I'm like, yo, what's Cope? Get that nigga out of here. Get that fat boy out of here. Yeah. And she's like, what? I said, I got ghosts here. Let's go. We're going to end this right now. Let's yeah. do this. And she was like, he's not here. He's not here. You know what I'm saying? He split through the other way. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I'm like, oh, yeah. And she got mad. Why are you bringing me? I'm like, oh, come on. Shut up. I don't want to hear this. Just took hope I was here with ghosts. You know what I'm saying? Well, me and ghosts is walking. He's hitting the building. I'm like, I don't care. Bomb everything. Let him yeah. know you was here. And we're walking out the building. We hear some gunshots. Shots went off on the roof. You know what I'm saying? It didn't come directly towards us. Yeah. But you hear it, I'm laughing. 
And then um, all of a sudden I get a call like two days later at the house. There was no cell phones, it, you know, house phones. And Cope calls me. Yo, are you going to do that to me? I thought we were boys and we NPC. You left NPC in 83, puppy. <laughs> I don't know why you keep saying you're NPC for all these years. Yeah. You know what I mean? Let's get the record straight. You're not. You left with T-Kid trying to smash your head with a bat. All right? You even said it in an article. Mm. All right? Why are you going to change the story? You're not NPC no more. You did it for a minute. You put it up. Okay. But that's that. You know? It is what it is. So you do you want to uh, say anything about what you want people to know about growing up in the Bronx? And, growing up in the Bronx? Where you are today? Well, where I'm at today, I'm peaceful. I'm happy. I'm calm. Growing up in the Bronx was the best experience of my life. Yeah. I would never trade it for anything. Yeah. I love the Bronx to death. Uh, my brother Ayo lives in Florida. My mother's gonna move to Florida. Mm. You know, maybe by next year, or whatever. Yeah. Mm, they want me to go. My brother wants me to go deeply. I've been in Florida in '87. I couldn't stand. I can't go to Florida. I'm 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 a Bronx boy. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm a dude that can walk out my house in slippers. Go to the grocery, the corner store, the bodega. You know, let me get a Lucy or you know what I'm saying? If I want to get on a bus. You know, I had cars. Yeah. I don't like driving. Yeah. I like walking, yeah. you know, or get on the train or get on a bus. That's me. Or yeah. get on a bicycle. You know what I'm saying? Do some exercise. Absolutely. But I love the Bronx. I love, there's no other borough like our borough. You got to remember, we got the Bronx. Absolutely. Yeah. Always remember that. Yeah. We always got the Bronx. That's where I live by. The Bronx. BX, baby. Yeah. Always. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... I mean, we got Yankee Stadium. You know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. There's history in the Bronx. Yeah. yeah. So and much. A lot of, a lot of good graph writers came out the Bronx. Yeah. All right? The Bronx developed a lot of style. We have a different technique. We have different ways with colors. You can tell a Brooklyn rider from a Bronx rider. It's the same way we wear clothes. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's the same way we talk. Yeah. You can tell we from the Bronx. Yeah. When I was living in Brooklyn for two years, everybody knew I was from the Bronx. Uh -huh. Just by the way I dress yeah, and yeah. things I wear. Right, right, yeah. You know, Brooklyn's with that coochie and all that. Yeah. <laughs> and we were with the pele pele's and all that. You know what I'm saying? Right, yeah. But, uh, yeah, the Bronx is a good experience. And, yeah, I would like to do galleries. I would definitely like to do galleries. That That's, a, that's something I always was interested in. I just, I just never ran into the person that can take me there. Okay. You know what I'm trying to say? Okay. But I would love to do that. Okay. You know? I got canvases sitting in the house just collecting dust, man. Okay. But yeah, that, the tattooing was good. And basically, I mean, I still do the graph. I haven't painted in a minute. Ever since they got rid of the wall on um, Boston Road, like I told you, near AD up that way. I used to paint there like crazy on the weekends. Yeah. I haven't painted there. I took a little little time for myself, you know what I'm saying, to really focus because, you know, mom's was ready to leave and that's in the back of my head, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Either I'm going to go or not go, but I can't. There's nothing for me in Florida. And don't get me wrong, there's always something for something. I just love the Bronx, man. Yeah. All right. That's great. I love the yeah. Bronx. I love the graph. Everything's changed, and all I want to say is, you know, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. And meeting you guys, and thank you to my family, NPC. I love yous. We're always gonna to be together. And I give my shout outs to Med, Toon, you know, Scan, PM, Nov, I Rock, and everybody else. I love yous. Peace. Those NPC, BX, baby.